morning. Good morning. I just, just wanted to have a few words with you. And I will wait to give people an opportunity to come on. I only tagged a few people in the beginning, and I try not to push buttons when I am live because I have been known, <laughs> my God, I've been known to mess things up when I do that. So we'll just give you a few moments to come on. Good morning to all. Thank you so much for coming on. Just wanted to share a few things with you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for sharing because I only tagged a few people. And again, I don't like pushing buttons when I go live because they're telling what Dr. Beverly will do. So good morning, good evening, depending on the time that you are coming on. So wonderful that you're taking a few minutes with me. Thank you for sharing. Um, please, let me know where you're coming on from. I love seeing where you're coming on from. And I love your comments uh, saying hello. I, I love hearing your heart. So thank you so much for everyone that takes the time to make a comment or send me a hug heart. And thank you again for sharing. Good morning, everyone, precious ones. I won't labor before you long, but we'll give you, give a couple of more minutes for people to come on. It is uh, about 7.30 a.m. here in the morning in California. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Now here in California, I know people are getting ready for work. So we'll wait for just a moment, and then we're just going to go ahead and get started because, hello, son, it's good to see you on. Because, quite frankly, I absolutely love technology. <laughs> you can watch it any time that you're available. You don't have to sit through it right now. So I'm only going to wait a little while longer because those of you that know me know how difficult it is for me to sit here and wait. So we just praise God. And when you have the opportunity to come on and, and hear what I have to say, it will be just as impactful then. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me turn this music off. Well, we praise God for you all, whether you're coming on now or whether you'll be watching and listening later in the day or in a few days. We praise God for you. Thank you for taking the time to click in and listen. I love you more. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm actually coming on live because I was scheduled to be on someone's program today. Hello, son. It's good to see you. Um, Apostle King from Burundi, where I will be going in August. So you'll be hearing more about that as he releases it. But in any event, I was scheduled to be on a program today. Hello, darling. Oh, my. My sons and daughters are coming on. It brings my heart joy. Good morning, woman of God. And uh, Apostle Darlene from Florida is saying hello. I was unable 
able to come on the program that I was scheduled today because they were having difficulties. However, what the Lord had impressed on my heart, I still wanted to have an opportunity um, to say, to release. So again, whether you're watching now, or whether you'll be watching in an hour or a day or a week, um, I'll just go ahead and get started because the blessing of the Lord is always the word. It's not about me. You know, there's such so much going on right now. These are extraordinary times, um, people of God, extraordinary times. There is so much going on. Um, apostles are alerted in their spirit. The prophets are alerted in their spirit. Evangelists are getting new mission callings. Mantles are falling on those that have been submitting um, before the Lord in total surrender as the Lord has been taking us through processes of transition for a number of months right now. There is so much going on in the spiritual realm, unseen and unknown by most, but definitely orchestrated, navigated by God himself for all of us. But with everything that is going on with, um, within the prophets, the apostles, the evangelists, the teach, the leaders of God, there's something that is most important, and we can never get away with what is most important, and that's God's love for us. That's salvation. It all has to do with his love for us and for salvation. That is the most important message. Love, the love of the Father for us and salvation. and. As I watch different conversations on, on social medias and so forth, and I hear that, I hear people address salvation. Hello, Samuel. Thank you so much for joining us. Glory be to God. But I haven't heard anyone explain what salvation is. If we really care about the souls, the children that God created, the way he cares about them, as we speak of, hello, Pastor Judy, as we speak of what it is that God has called us to do, if we don't explain what God has called us to do, then we're still leaving people in the cloud, in the dark, especially when we're trying to reach the ones that have yet to hear about the glorious wonder of Jesus Christ. So before we go any further, I am going to share what salvation is, because that's what all of this is about. This is why there is a five-fold ministry. This is why God created us. This is why Jesus came. This is what everything has been about since the creation of man and Adam to this time and to eternity. Salvation. Salvation is person preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss deliverance from and the consequences from sin. Salvation is about deliverance. It's about deliverance from sin and the deliverance from the consequences of sin. When God created us, everyone, and I'm talking to the saved, I'm talking to the unsaved, I'm talking to the leaders, I'm talking to everyone that will hear the heart of God. When God created us, he created us out of love, which is magnificent because God is love. So the only way he could have created us is out of love. It's nothing else possible because he is love. So not only did he create us out of love, he created us because he wanted a family he created us because he wanted children. He wanted sons 
and daughters. He wants it to be a blessing to us, and he wanted us to be a blessing to him. He wanted us to worship him and praise him and honor him and love him the way that he loves us. Now, that's challenging for some people to understand because the magnitude of God's love is far beyond what we could fathom. But if you remember at the onset, he made us in his image and his likeness. So he created us with the potentiality of, for us to love him the way he loves us. But something happened. Sin came into place. Sin came into place within the Garden of Eden where he himself released his breath. The breath of God was breathed into the nostrils of man and he became a living soul. We literally became a part of God, created by God, created to look like him, to move like him, to speak like him, to live like him, victoriously, royally, in the essence of his glory. But, but when sin came and he, Adam listened to the wrong father. He listened to the father of this world system. He listened to the father of lies instead of the father of the kingdom of God, instead of the father of the kingdom of heaven, instead of the father of truth, instead of the father, which is love, the father that his breath literally consumed man and connected and co-joined him to God. Just like when we have children, they are connected to us within that bloodline immersed and emerged from the womb of a woman the same way so hello emma thanks for watching so when sin came sin separated us and it took us from being under the government and the auspice of god abba father of love to under the slave ship of the father of lies that has been running havoc within this world system since that time. Ever since then, God has been doing everything, decade after decade, century after century, to bring us back into alignment with himself. He will never, ever let the children, the sons of daughter, he created to look like him, sound like him, move like him, create like him, produce like him, the royalty of him be kept under the slave ship of Satan, who was a rebellious, jealous angel that decided that he was going to be greater than the God that created him and took a third of the angels to believe him and become part of his coup. Do you honestly think the God of love, who is love, that cannot do anything but love, is going to allow Satan and the world system steal what belongs to him and it not go uncontested? I assure you, he will not. So the Lord has raised up remnants, generation to generation, that he has worked through to bring the truth to those that have been lied to and under the deception of the enemies of God. Apostles that bring order and that teach the government of God that holds accountability and correction. The, the prophet that is here to release the word of God from the throne room of God, from his very mouth. And there are different types of prophets, seers, that he's allowed that their spiritual eyes open to see what he is showing them. We see what God is saying. Just like when 
Jesus was here in this earth and he said, huh? I only do what I see my father do. So God showed Jesus what he wanted and Jesus spoke it, who is the word and created it and the Holy Spirit manifested from the reality of heaven through the spiritual realm and to the earth realm and made it happen. God has never stopped loving all of us. He's never stopped loving you. And yes, we, the apostles, this is the apostolic prophetic time. The Lord is working through the prophets and the apostles to bring his word of truth into a world full of lies and to bring order from the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, into this earth realm because it doesn't belong to Satan. The earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. But hear me. He created the earth on our behalf. It belongs to us. And it's time for us to stop living as slaves in a world system that the Jesus, the Son of God, has taken back under control of the kingdom of God and to us as the inheritors of God and the inheritors of Christ Jesus. He gave us the victory. He gave us triumph. He freed us from sin nature. And we are supposed supposed to once again have authority and dominion over this earth realm. However, there are many still living in the smoke screen of the lies of Satan. And it's, <laughs> we are in the era where it stops. It is the responsibility of the fivefold ministry to bring the truth that's the mission the anointings that we have and hold the mantles that we have and hold isn't for us to be glamorous listen i'll tell you the truth <laughs> i am a seer prophet of god an apostle of the lord of the king there is nothing glamorous about these offices we go through strategic testing strategic sacrifices we are different we've never fit in we are under constant attack by the enemies of god why because the enemies of god knows who we are and we are held at a higher standard and strict strategic standards of god it's not, not a glamorous position but when you're in the presence of god people of god and you fall in love with the king all you care about is what he cares about all you love is what he loves glory be to god listen over 17 years ago i fell in love with jesus i fell in love with him he came to me and put his arms around me and i was done oh my god i never felt love like that before i fell in love with jesus at that moment my god there was nothing like it i was filled can you imagine jesus appearing before you and putting his arms around you <laughs> for a true apostle and prophet they will always listen and encounter with jesus because you cannot represent love and you cannot stay focused on what it is that you're called to do with everything and uh, everyone that we may come against you if you're not consumed with the love of Jesus. So you will always have an encounter with Jesus. And then we're going to go through a series of testings and trials so that we are not selfish and to prove that we are unselfish and sacrifices to prove who we serve, who do we love more? <laughs> a true prophet and an apostle will never explain themselves. We're not moved by comments from people. <laughs> We're not moved by that. 
because we know that we live in a fallen world and we know our responsibility and the mission in this earth realm is that everybody in the world knows the name of Jesus and that sin abounds in the earth realm. So we don't fault or blame anyone and their sin. We love and embrace them and want to bring them to the truth of Jesus Christ, that they are victorious, that they're free from sin nature, that what they've known or been taught over time through generations and by society is a lie. God is love. God, God is love. And we cannot do anything but exemplify his love. The enemy is it's the opposite of that. That's why in the world, you are, you're, there's so much anger and hatred and jealousy and envy and lies and immorality. I'm here to tell you this. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is hovering over the earth right now. It's hovering over the earth. Because we are in a time where God says, I am God. This is my land, and these are my people, and I want them back. I want them to know who I am. I want them to know the love that I have for them. And I want them to know what my son has done on their behalf. So there is an arising right now of a remnant of people that will tell the truth about the I am that I am and tell you the truth about his love for us and what he has meant for us before the foundation of the world. And he will never give up on us. He will never let you go. You belong to him. Glory be be to the living God. I am here to tell you the word of God, the Bible, it is true. Whether you believe it or not, people of God, it really uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that it's true. It's God's voice in print that is trying to help us and lead and guide us back to him. It is true. Whether you believe Believe it or not, I am here to tell you, anyone that knows me knows that I don't lie. I will not lie. I'm a prophet of God, and it's not a lie that's going to come out the lips, the mouth that he has anointed to bring forth his truth into this earth realm. Heaven is real. The kingdom of God, where he resides, is real. Hell is real, people of God. And God did not create hell for his children. He did not. He created hell for the rebellious angels that rose up against him and that had been trying to steal his children since Adam. God loves us so much that he literally, and I know you hear this, but it's not a cliche. He literally, Literally gave his only begotten son, dispatched him in the womb of a woman into this earth realm to literally represent him in this earth realm by showing people that God heals, God delivers, God will bring miracles through the blind soul. The lame walked. The deaf heard. He literally was God in man <clears throat> to walk this earth to show what the truth. And, and he literally sacrificed his own son <clears throat> so that we could live and live life abundantly so that we, we can have eternity with him. <laughs> oh my God. We live forever, people. We go to sleep here. We don't die. Death is no longer our portion. When we cease to be, when our time 
on the side of the rim is up. We breathe out the breath of God. And that spirit, which is in that breath, will go one of two places because it will live for eternity. This body is not who you are. The breath of God, the spirit of God, which is in that breath, is who you are. And you live forever. So eternity will never end. And eternity, you will live with the Father, with Jesus in heavenly places, where there's nothing but love and royalty and mansions and joy that you cannot fathom forever. Or, or you will live with the Father that you chose to follow in this earth realm, in the fire and tormenting of hell. It is not your portion. So we have to tell you the truth. I love you enough to tell you the truth, my God. He loves you enough that he sacrificed the life, but not just the life of his son. They beat him and lied on him and tried to break him and spit on him. Cut him up, mocked him, and he begged God not to intervene. He said, Father, no, no, they know not what they do. And people are just as blinded now by the lies as they were blinded then. I am here to tell you, God, our Father God, loves us more than we can ever experience that we can fathom with our natural mind. And the only way you can get to God is through the sacrifice of his son that he has given us. You must receive Jesus in your heart and celebrate the love and compassion that he has, that he allowed himself to be brutalized slaughtered and murdered so that we can go back to our own kind, which is Father God. Now, our own kind. Let me explain that to you. When God created the earth and he started putting in the plants and the fruit trees and the animals, remember what he said. He said that he, when he made the fruit trees, he said, so he made them after their own kind, and their seed is within them so that they can only produce what that seed was. So an apple had an apple seed, and an apple can only reproduce apples. An orange had an orange seed, and an orange could only reproduce an orange. A giraffe could only reproduce a giraffe. An elephant could only reproduce an elephant. An elephant could not be a fish. A fish could not be a lion. So God tried everything, decade after decade, remnant after remnant, to get people on their own to come back to God. But they continued to wallow in sin. He even flooded the older earth. And this wasn't the first flood, but that's another teaching. And still, they went back into sin. And he said it, it won't work. But he knew it wouldn't work from the beginning. Before the foundation of the world. And Jesus had already planned to come. So in order for him to save his family, his children, what did he have to bring? In order to reproduce... <laughs> A new creation that was going to come back to him, that could be realigned back to him, he had to release the seed of his own kind. Jesus had to come as his only begotten son. <laughs> Jesus came to bring us salvation. It is already done. Whom would you love? Whom would you serve? Whom will you believe? How, how do you know that the devil is in the mix? He's the opposite of God. 
He's anger. He's hatred. He's seeing all over the earth. He's immoral. He's envious. He's, <laughs> he's a liar. And he's a good liar. Glory be to God. When you give your life to Jesus, when you give your heart to Jesus, then the Spirit of God, who is God, helps you understand the word that's in print. He sends people to you that now, as they start talking about the Father, it makes sense. And I'll tell you a secret that's not a secret. You cannot even have valued relationships and marriages and love until you know love that created you. Love came from God. And until you give your heart to Jesus, you cannot get to the Father. There is a price to pay, and that's honoring what he has put in place because he put, tried everything else, and he put in place himself in this life. But when you receive him, and you're now connected to God, because Jesus is love, because Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is love because Holy Spirit is God. God is love. You cannot even have a valuable, meaningful, truthful relationship and bounded in love if you're not connected to love. Who is love? He is the founder, the creator. He is love. Until then, you'll just be trying the best you can. And what happens with that? Separations, divorce, challenges in the home, arguments, fighting. You must know who love is. And God is love. Mm. I'll tell you some truths, and then I'm, I'm going to go. Some tr truths. Number one. <laughs> Glory to God. I hope this is helping you. Without doing a thing, we are already deeply loved by God. Without doing a thing, you don't have to do a work. You don't have to put a cloth over somebody. You don't have to fast for, for 10 hours or four days without doing a thing. We are already deeply and completely loved by God. You're his child. You don't have to earn that. Hmm. The another truth, he created us for himself. <laughs> oh my God. He created us for himself. He wanted a family. Just like when two people come together and they marry, they want a family. They want to extend what's inside of them to their children. God created us for himself because he wanted a family. Love has characteristics. We were made in the image of God love, and we are supposed to have God love characteristics. And what is that? Huh? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy and love does not boast or brag. Love is not proud and love does not dishonor others. How can we? We're brothers and sisters of God. Mm. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love does not keep Love does not keep track of someone's right or wrongs. In other words, love doesn't hold a grudge. <laughs> so listen, stop fooling yourself, dear ones. If you're angry with somebody and you still have a grudge, that's not God. That's not love. And listen, if it's not God, who is it? Check yourself with the truth. Love, love does not take joy and turn it into evil. Love is joy. Love is not meanness, but love rejoices in truth. Love doesn't get excited when someone is being mean or evil. Love rejoices in truth. 
Love always hopes because you know there's nothing impossible with God. There's no better father than have than God Almighty, the one that's responsible for creating everything. So how can we not hope? Mm. Love always perseveres because we know he never fails us. Hi, honey. And he never forsakes us. Love never fails. Oh, my. Love covers our past, covers our faults, covers our sins. Co love redeems. Love restores. Love forgives. Love bursts and gives us new life and new relationships. <laughs> As God's chosen people, beloved ones, holy and dearly unto the Lord, we should always be clothed with compassion, with gentleness, kindness, and patience, and forgive one another. Love and God's love brings unity. I've been to multiple countries, and I have to tell you, I cringe when I hear the pastor screaming at the people talking, saying that they're ministering to them and they're preaching the gospel. Jesus did not scream at the people. Jesus does not have to force God on people. Jesus did not speak in anger. That is not God. He's gentle. He's kind. He's compassionate. You don't have to beat Jesus into people. He is not, God does not want to be the father of those in fear. My God. He wants us to love him. He loves us. Check yourself. Are you really representing God when you're ministering to his sheep? Are you really representing Jesus when you minister? to his sheep. <laughs> He's compassionate. He's gentle. He's kind. He's patient. He forgives one another. <laughs> he loves and his love brings unity. We have to be imitators of God as beloved children. We have to walk in love as Christ was, as Christ loved us, and he gave himself, and he gave his life for us as an offering to God on our behalf. And I'm going to say that again. Jesus gave his life as an offering for us to God on our behalf. We are in an era of truth. The government of God, the kingdom of God is hovering over the earth. And it is causing an upset in this earth realm of the world system. The devil and his forces are reacting. That's why you're seeing such chaos and such anger. Everybody's fighting. They're fighting in stores. They're fighting at fast food. He is being revealed. And the that he is what he is being revealed in people. Deliverance is necessary. But you don't know deliverance is necessary if he's not being revealed. So we can't complain about what's happening because when the light shines on the darkness, what is in the darkness, whether it's in the earth grim on the ground or in people, are going to be revealed. You pray for deliverance. You rise up in your anointing and you be willing to be Jesus in this earth and deliver. Not to talk about, not to chastise or criticize, but to be Jesus and deliver. <laughs> it is our responsibility to support the mission. And the mission is this, that globally to the four corners of the earth, everyone will have an opportunity to hear and know Jesus. So they have a conscience opportunity to choose him as his Lord and Savior. And for those that haven't yet, I am here to tell you, there is no greater love 
than the love of your father. He never fails you. He will never forsake you. He will never give up on you. He's not that kind of father. And he's not that kind of God. He will continue to try to reveal himself to you. He is the answer to every question. And he is the answer to every situation. There is no other answer than the one that knows the very end from the very beginning. Because he is the reason that everything is. Jesus. It's the ticket to life and life and abundance and life everlasting with the Father God. Jesus is the ticket to divine healing miracles. Jesus is the ticket to peace in the midst of chaos that you cannot comprehend. And if anyone is saying that they don't love, then they are not walking in the auspice of the fullness of God. It is impossible for me not to love you. I don't have to know you to love you. I love the God who loves you, who loves me. He is who I am. He is in me. He reigns in me. And it's my life's mission that you understand huh, as much as our human mind can understand that we will never, ever be alone. God wants us all to be all that he has created us to be. He is our father and we are his very best collateral. We are more important than the animals. We were more important than the angels and we will always be his children. His greatest love is us. So if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you are living a life where you're confused and incomplete and you don't know what to do about it. Well, honey, you're incomplete because you need God the Father and you need Jesus to get to God the Father. There is no life outside his love. Jesus came to give us truth, grace, and life. Jesus is the light of men. You need his light in order to have his life. So if that's what you want, dear ones, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want you in my heart. I may not understand, but I understand that I need love. And I understand now that Father God is the source of love. And you, Jesus, are the source to Father God. So please come into my life. I believe you. Help me to receive you. If you've said this, repeat it. Let me tell you, he's already there. He's just waiting on you. Thank you all for taking the time to hear, to listen to what the Lord had placed in my spirit that he wanted released today. Please share. Be a blessing to someone else. You don't have to be behind a pulpit to be a minister of God. You just have to be a believer and willing to use technology to help bring people to Jesus worldwide. God bless you all. Until next time, know that you know that you know. I love you more. Bye for now.